friends are going to do uh, their Christmas musical. They've worked uh, the last seven months on putting this together. It's called The Power of the King. I know you all are going to be blessed for it. So, without any further ado, the Sunlight Singers.
so different from the town about 2,000 years ago. People were just like us, looking for guidance and direction, hope and safety, for light in the dark world. Thank <laughs> you. 
That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. You'll find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast of hosts of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go! <laughs> they hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. <coughs> and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what happened and the angels had said to and what the angels had said to them about this child. In Isaiah chapter 9, the Bible tells us, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. All glory to him who alone is God, our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord.
Kids, y'all did a great job. Let's give them all one more. Thank you. And Jesus is our mighty God. The word mighty, it means powerful warrior. He is our champion. He is the conqueror. The Messiah is who is our champion. Everywhere his, heart, his name is proclaimed, hearts are conquered for Jesus. There's a Presbyterian church in this place called New Hebrides Island in South Pacific that has a tablet on the wall that says this. When missionary John Gaddy came here in 1846, there were no Christians. But when he left in 1872, there were no heathen. When the name of Jesus is proclaimed, victory is also proclaimed. Jesus is the conquering champion. But he's not just a hero in the sense that we talk about a hero in our world. He is our mighty God. Yes. See, the Messiah would have to be different than any other champion, any other warrior, any other king in all of history. Jesus is 100% human and 100% God. Amen. Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 20 says it like this. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created. And He is supreme over all creation. For through Him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things that we can see and the things that we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in this unseen world. Everything was created through Him and for Him. He existed before anything else, and He holds all of creation together. Christ also is the head of the church, which is His body. He is the beginning, the supreme over all who rise from the dead. So, He is first in everything. For God in all of His fullness was pleased to live in Christ. And through Him, God reconciled everything to Himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by the means of Christ's blood on the cross. Jesus Christ is not just our champion. He is the supreme champion. He is first and foremost over all. He is mighty God. He's not just a good teacher. He is the image of the invisible God to us. He didn't just conquer death on the cross. He conquered sin for all time. And He wants to conquer our hearts too. But Jesus doesn't come in with military might. He doesn't come in with worldly power. He conquers our hearts because of His sacrificial, unending love. Now maybe you're uncomfortable with the phrase this morning that God loves you. Maybe that's something that's hard for you to grasp or understand. 
maybe this idea of God loving me, it feels a little wishy-washy or it feels a little touchy-feely. And you say, you know, I'm just not comfortable with that. Well, God's love is not this wishy-washy, touchy-feely kind of love. It is a powerful love. It is a love that fights for you, that never gives up on you, that desires the very best for you, and can save you from any and all sin. Amen. That is the love of Jesus Christ. Do you know the power of Jesus' love today? And that's a question we all must answer. Do we know the power of Jesus' love, or are we still looking for power somewhere else? Warren Wearsby once said, The history of mankind has been the story of the discovery of power and then its application of power. First it was manpower, then it was horsepower, then it was steam power and electric power, and now it is nuclear atomic power. Each step of the power path has enriched both mankind materially and financially, but it is doubtful that we are any richer spiritually. He said per, per, pursuing the power of this world does not rich in our hearts, does not rich in our spirits. He says, we are able to harness today the powers of the universe, but we can't control ourselves or keep selfish people from destroying the world or its people. The basic power needed for everyone today is spiritual power, and that power, the source of that power, is Jesus Christ. We all desire power in some form or another. For us, it might look like trying to be in control of our lives. We want that control. We want to feel like we have the power. But no power that we pursue in this world has the power to save us. It is not what we need. We need the power of our mighty God. Yes. We need our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We need His power to reign in our lives because He is able he can take all the demands of this world. He fulfilled all the requirements of the law and the cross. And He can save you from your sins here this day. See, strength for a Christian doesn't come from being so good that you're better than everybody else. Strength from a Christian doesn't come from being any more special than anybody else. Strength from a Christian doesn't come from us at all. It comes from Jesus Christ and a relationship with Him. So, I'll ask again. Do you know the power of Jesus' love today? Amen. Because His power is what we all need. Let's pray. Lord, we are so thankful for Your power that overcame the cross and the grave, that overcomes sinful hearts, that overcomes our past, that overcomes our failures, our mistakes, that fights for us, that pursues us, that desires us to turn our lives over to You. And God, we know that your power is beyond all imagination. So God, I pray that your power would reign in our hearts here this morning. And your power would reign in our families, in our jobs, in our church, in our schools, in our community, that your name would be praised. And that all of us here would stop looking to our own power. We would stop trying to do things in our own control. And we would humbly submit to you. You are mighty God. We trust in you today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you're here today and you do not know the power of Jesus, you don't know the power of our Savior reigning in your life, and you want to give your life over to Him, if you want to be baptized in the waters of baptism, if you want to make your commitment to Christ here today, we're going to offer a time of invitation this morning. Thank you for the kids giving us that message of hope and power today. And Lord... We know you can reign in our hearts. So we're going to have a time of invitation. Would you stand as we come and we sing?
to adore Jesus Christ here today. We're so glad to come out and join us. We're so thankful for the kids putting on our presentation here today. You're invited to come back this evening. As I said, at 6 o'clock, we're going to be stuffing bags for our shut-ins. And uh, if you are in the teen play for next week, you're going to be having a practice here in the auditorium. So be here at 6 o'clock to rehearse for that. And uh, you're invited back next week, too. Or we'll, we'll get together, and we'll have another Christmas play. This is what our teens are going to be putting on, and uh, it's going to be special. We're so glad that you're here today supporting uh, our, our kids and your family. Um, let's pray and we'll be close. We'll be dismissed today. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for you and thankful for this message that's been presented here today. Thankful for the gift of Jesus 2,000 years ago in the manger. We're thankful that he came in weakness, but he was raised in power. And Lord, we pray that power of Jesus will reign in all of our hearts here today. Thank you for the gift of Christmas, the power of your name. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.